Hello everybody, my name is Angus. Thank you for letting me into your classroom and welcome to our movie about the web of life. So in this movie, we're going to talk about the single source of energy that all life depends on. We're going to talk about what biodiversity is, what that term means. We're going to talk about habitats, different types of habitats, explaining what that means. And then we're going to explore some food chains and how those food chains intersect to form the web of life. So what is biodiversity? Well, that word biodiversity, it's really two words squished together. It's biological and diversity. So biological, it means living things, all the living things, including you and me. From the huge whales that live out to sea, to the fishes that those whales eat, to the big trees that live on land, to the robin that's nesting in the tree, and the little bugs that the robin is eating. All of those things are biological. Every single living thing is biological. And diversity just means difference. That's all it means. So the variety of life, the different living things, is what the word biodiversity means. As simple as that, all of the different living things. So what is a habitat? Well, a habitat, you've probably heard before, is a place where a plant or an animal lives. Now, first of all, think of the robin. There's over two million robins in Ireland. They live all over the place in all of the different habitats in Ireland. But if you have a robin living in Dublin city, Dublin city, the challenges that robin will have might be the rubbish that's there, might be the huge number of cats that live there, all of the people and the traffic that's there. However, there's lots of rubbish, lots of food for them to eat, for them to gobble up, and lots of gardens for them to hide in. So that's a city habitat. Whereas the robin that lives in the countryside, it might live in the hedgerow at the edge of a farm and it prefers to eat berries and bugs that it finds there. And there mightn't be as many cats, but there's the sparrowhawk. And the sparrowhawk, the ultimate of bird hunters, is looking for robins, looking for robins to catch and to eat. So the robin that lives in the countryside needs to be able to deal with that. So even though both those robins, they have their homes, one is the city and one is the countryside, they're very different habitats. So a habitat is not just where a plant or an animal's home is, it's the surroundings as well. Another example of a habitat, we have so many in Ireland. Think of the creatures that live high up in the mountains, the upland habitats, where it's cold, where there's an awful lot of rain, and it freezes over in the wintertime. It's a very challenging habitat, very different from the creatures that live on the rocky shore, that are covered over by the tide twice a day, and hit by the sun and the rain twice a day. So remember, habitats are not just a plant or an animal's home, not just where they live, but it's all of the other factors that surround them as well. What's the weather like? What's the temperature like? What kind of challenges do they face? What do they have to eat in each different habitat? So now that we know what biodiversity means, and we're thinking about different habitats. We need to start thinking about our food chains and how they turn into our food webs. And they are all powered by our single source of energy, the sun. The sun powers everything on the planet. From the air that is moving around, it charges that wind, to all of the plants that grow, to all of the different foods that we eat. They've all come from plants or they're animals that are eating plants and they've all got their energy from the sun. Without the sun, there would be no plants. Without the sun, there would be no food. There would be no us. Even down to the energy that charges your electric light or the energy that charges your car. The petrol that comes from oil is dead plants that used to live millions of years ago. The petrol that powers your car is dead plants that have harnessed the sun's energy and been trapped underground for millions of years. The solar panels that people use on their roofs to generate electricity is a direct show of the energy from the sun. And then it powers our electricity to power our various different devices. So all food chains, and subsequently, or from that, all webs of life start with the sun 
the sun is the single source of energy that allows everything to grow. So all of these giant trees, and in fact all of the plants around us, they get their energy from the sun. Their leaves that they put out in the springtime, they're like solar panels. And once charged with energy from the sun, they take the carbon dioxide from the sky and they split it into carbon and oxygen. And they use the carbon for their own food source and they pass out the oxygen for us and all of the other animals to breed. So all food chains, in fact, all food webs, start with a plant. So food webs can get pretty complex, can get pretty diverse, have a huge range of different living things in them. In this woodland habitat where we are, the fallen log beside me, this mighty tree that gathered all that sun's energy and supported so much life for so many years, now still supports life, even in death, even lying on the forest floor. Inside here, there are a whole load of little invertebrates, little mini beasts that are starting to eat up that wood. There are other creatures, beetles and other characters, that are eating those. There are flies that will use this log for food, for refuge. There are frogs around us that will gobble up those flies. And of course the foxes and some other birds will try and catch those frogs, making the web ever more complex. The more species we have, the healthier and stronger this forest is. The more species there are for the fox to eat, the more chance it has of surviving. The more different types of plants that there are in the woods, the more invertebrates and small little bugs that there are supported by them. And of course, they're supplying food for so much more. You end up with a very complicated, very diverse, very healthy web of life. So this habitat we're in, this habitat is the tidal zone this sandy habitat where the sea comes in twice a day and covers over this area and then goes out and exposes it and it's full of life. All the bumps behind me in the sand are casts, casts from characters called lugworms. Those worms, they eat their way through the sand and they leave behind their eaten sand in that little swirly bump that's there. They eat the, the organic material that's in the sand. They eat the biological stuff that is in there. So there's a really easy food chain to show you here. It starts, of course, the sun's energy, and the sun's energy gives energy to this seaweed, the plant that is able to grow, captures that sun's energy, and the seaweed grows and grows. But the seaweed gets nibbled. It gets nibbled by a little character here called a winkle. And winkles, a bit like snails you might find in your garden, but these guys are snails of the sea, and they will eat away at the seaweed. And the winkle, in turn, has to watch out because it'll get eaten by the whelk, by the big whelk, which is hungry and always looking for various different little shellfish to eat up. But the whelk needs to watch out because maybe crabs or birds, gulls and such, will eat up those whelks. So we've a very simple chain. We've got our sun giving energy to our plant. We've got our small animal eating that plant. We've a bigger animal eating that uh, eating that little winkle and then we've the gull that will come along and eat up the whelk. That's our chain but of course life is not that simple. There is more of a web here than a chain. So the sun giving energy to the seaweed and the seaweed then as it grows gets eaten by the winkle and then the winkle gets eaten by the whelk and the whelk gets eaten by a bird. This is a bird. <laughs> but of course it's more complicated than that. What of the crabs? The crabs will happily eat the whelks. And the crabs will happily eat the winkles. But those crabs need to watch out because they in turn will also be eaten by the birds. Now our chain is starting to get a bit more complicated. The otters that live along the coast the otter will happily eat some bird's eggs if it can find them. The otter will eat some of the shellfish. And the otter will also eat the crab. And now we can see how it intersects just like a web. 
and it doesn't stop there. Fish will happily eat some of the shellfish. Bigger fish, in turn, will eat those guys. And both of them need to watch out, for they'll get eaten by the mighty dolphin. So now the whole lot is starting to crisscross, and you see the importance of the diversity. And that's only two different types of shellfish that we're talking about down here on the shore. There are so many different types of shellfish, and there are so many different types of birds, and so many species of crab, and all of them, their food chains, intersect and form a very healthy, very diverse web of life. So we've explored the concept of biodiversity. We've explored habitats, food chains, and how they overlap and become webs of life. So now for you, go out and explore your own local habitats and remember the complexes, those webs of life that help keep us alive are all around us. Mm -hmm.